Last week we were in Southwest Alaska with our client, Larry Owen. And after an epic shootout in the river bottom, we jumped in the float planes and flew back to Dillingham. From there, we caught a commercial flight to Anchorage and another flight out to Homer. Best known as the halibut fishing capital of the world and the destination for this week's episode as we pursue mountain goats off the Gulf of Alaska. Well, we got the last flight of the day in to Homer here from Anchorage, but we're in super late. We got in with just enough time to move some of our gear down to the boat on the pier. Oh, we gotta get some shut eye. We gotta get up early tomorrow morning, get down there on the piers, load the rest of our gear on the boat, get settled in, and head out across the salt water on what should be one epic mountain goat hunt. Like I said, it's late. I gotta get some sleep. See you in the morning. People ask me why I go mountain goat hunting. I like to hunt mountain goats and sheep. I'm not built like your prototypical mountain hunter, you know, six feet tall, 175 to 180 pounds of nothing but lightweight mountain going muscle mass. I'm 6'8", I'm 280 pounds, I'm a big man. But I love to hunt animals that live on top of the world. I love the challenges that are associated with them. And I love the feeling of getting to the top of a mountain and hunting animals that most people don't even have the desire or maybe the ability to even get off the couch and try for. Well, we're getting the boat all loaded up with everybody. Our gear's on board. The weather's perfect. We're ready to hit it. Now we're gonna run the boat way out off through the salt water into the ocean around the outside. Paul's got a great area to hunt. Probably the best mountain goat area in all of Alaska. So we gotta get up here and everybody's chomping at the bit to get going. This boat is just short of 60 feet in length. It's got a big wheelhouse. It's got multiple cabins for sleeping arrangements. You've got your guides and boat staff sleeping in one area. You've got the hunter sleeping in another area. You've got a huge galley. You've got the leather sectional couch uh, with a big screen TV, a selection of movies, a heater. It, there isn't anything on this boat that you wouldn't have at home. Minus a king size bed. It's really comfortable as far as mountain hunting goes. You know, you're staying on the boat. You've got all the comforts at home, good food, hot shower, and good place to sleep when you're dry. And a lot of it's just weather, you know, here. It's coastal, it's September. There's big easterly fronts that come through constantly. Or, and you could you could do this out of a tent, but it'd be miserable, you know. And with with a boat, you're mobile. Um, one thing I like about it is you're you get up in the morning, you go skip around, you find them. You're not just climbing at nothing. You know when you take off on the beach, you got a real good chance of landing in in some animals and some big mature some big mature billies, you know. So it's a good feeling when you're climbing.
This segment of the adventure series is sponsored by Super Hides by Marathon Seat Covers. This segment of the adventure series is sponsored by Caldwell Shooting Supplies. Innovation defined, accuracy anywhere. I booked this particular hunt for myself because it had been a long time since I took my last goat in southeast Alaska down on Baranoff Island. I mean, it's been several years. And since then, I've done all of my goat hunting in British Columbia. I really wanted to come back to Alaska and do another hunt other than brown bear. And I also wanted to have the complete boat experience. just steamed out of the harbor in Homer, Alaska. You know, and it's, what a view. I mean, it's a beautiful day. We're making pretty good time and tide's ripping out. From the looks of things, it's gonna be a pretty western hunt. I mean, these mountains are wild. They're steep, got a lot of rainforest at the bottom. It opens up into goat country on top, and I'm told it even gets more wild out where we're headed. So, it'll be a great adventure. It'll be a great week. I, mean, I can only imagine we're gonna have a lot of fun. Hopefully, if the weather holds like this, we ought to come in with some nice goats. I always feel like when I get to Alaska, it's like coming home. I've never lived here, but I feel right at home in Alaska. And I just really, really wanted to come up here and do a mountain goat hunt based on a boat in the Gulf of Alaska in a place that had a really high population of animals. And this pickler hunt fit that bill perfectly. Halfway to the hunting area, we had to stop and pick up the registration permit that's required to goat hunt in this area. All right, got all my paperwork. I'm ready to head to shore, we'll get this registration permit. So we unloaded the skiff and headed to shore. Besides our license and tag, anything else we need? It took about an hour, and then we were back on the boat and heading out into the open water. And we finished running to our bay, where we would be anchored up for the next week. So even though the uh, weather's not giving us a whole bunch of opportunity, every once in a while we just skiff around and see if we can catch one in the right spot and hope we get lucky. September is our, I think it's one of our worst weather months for, it's called the fall equinox. Or if you do a seven day hunt, a lot of times you'll only get out for a couple days. You know, summer's got a certain pattern. It's usually typically not too bad. And then wintertime's the same thing. It's just typically not too good. But this time of year, we're kind of transitioning summer to winter. So, um, you know, we've had everything from rain and fog and um, 
and southeast winds 40 knots in the last five days to where you know we're expecting northwest winds at 35 knots today. So that just shows you know just complete around the compass in just you know three days of time. This segment of the adventure series is sponsored by Burris Optics. Find what matters. This segment of the adventure series is sponsored by Tribe One Outdoors and their innovative products. My primary goal on this trip was to take a big mature mountain goat using my muzzleloader. I enjoy the challenge of hunting with primitive weapons and I chose to use my CVA Acura V2 with nitride finish. Uh-oh. <laughs> I might have had moisture down the barrel when I put the powder in. So if that's the case, it might take a couple of these. That first prime will pop it and dry it. Second one should light it off, but I'm just gonna fire it. I think Alaska is made for modern rifles. This gun was designed for this type of hunting because of the salt water and the rust and everything else that could happen. The nitride finish is impervious to rust. And it's just probably about the best all around mountain muzzle loader available on the planet today. I loaded this gun with 150 grains of white hot pellets and I stuffed a 405 grain copper power belt bullet behind it. Now that's and as tough as mountain goats are, I wanted to have enough stopping power to anchor him right where he was at. To make sure that I had a little bit of extended distance in case I needed to stretch a shot, I topped the gun with my Burris Eliminator II laser scope. This gave me the ability to shoot with extreme confidence out to 250 yards. I'm gonna shoot my 338 right now. Make sure my rifle plan is set up. Turn 50 yards. Let's let the big dog eat. I was holding. Yep. You've seen a lot of them in there before. When I booked this hunt, Paul told me that there was an area that he has always wanted to hunt, and he discovered some old logging roads there that were still open. He wanted to bring a four-wheeler out on the boat and take it to shore. Now, I had no idea what that was gonna entail, but one of our first orders of business was to go to the back of the bay and use the crane on the boat to offload the four-wheeler onto two Zodiacs, and this was an adventure in itself. <laughs> Steaming over to a bay where we put a four-wheeler last night. There's an old logging road that goes up into some country they haven't hunted before. We're gonna go up and see what we can find. Maybe we'll find some fresh goat country. Rumor has it there's some big billies back in there a couple of miles that maybe never been hunted. Only time will tell. I love life on the boat. <laughs> I grew up in Michigan, so being on a boat is like, that's my second home. 
it's a great atmosphere. Uh, it's fun, you know, and it, it's a really unique experience to, uh, to be able to travel around Alaska like this in a boat with a bunch of really great guys. There's three billies at the very top of that peak over there. Paul's getting his gear together. Oh, he got it on. The hammer. And the slammer. Left side of where those goats are. Oh, over in the other bowl? Yeah. It's a monster. Looks like a monster from here. So it begins. One thing about it with those, we could go on that side of the ridge, pop up parallel on them if we had to. Oh yeah, for sure. And then once you're there, that thing, that thing dives off into a huge ball on the back side. So oh. this is that lagoon I was telling you about that the tide. Oh, yeah. This segment of the Adventure Series is sponsored by CVA Muzzleloaders. It's just a better gun. This segment of the Adventure Series is sponsored by Camo Restore. Make your camo outerwear last a little bit longer. Our mountain goat population's probably the best in South Central Alaska. I think there's 360 goats within this little 12 mile chunk here. And you know, per, per 15 mile square, it goes like that for about 60 miles. So we don't have a problem finding goats, uh, we got, you know, you got to find approachable goats, but um, it's definitely really a healthy population. Phenomenal situation here. We came to shore, we started looking, we thought there was three billies up there, there's four. And you know, we don't know for sure they're billies, but they look like billies. They're way up high on the mountain like billies will be. Um, they're dirty, um, they're huge in the body. I mean, there's just so much about them that we like. The only thing we don't like is the fact that they're at the very top of the mountain which means obviously a long, nasty climb that would take most of the day. No matter what, you have to climb when you go after a goat, but I'm gonna see if there's something here that I can't live without. If there's a big goat up there that I really want, well, my bet is we're gonna start climbing and we won't stop until we've got one. They are all billies, every one of them, all four of them, mature, full-age billies. Hard to tell from here, but I think the top one's just a real brute of a, a billy, but they've all dug these ledges, like for beds, <clears throat> in this dirt chute. And, I mean, they're just asleep. They're just laying up there. How you tell the difference between a billy and a nanny? First and foremost, if you get close enough to look at the horns, or you have a good enough spotting scope, Billies are real heavy. Nannies are long and skinny horns. 
Billies are heavy, they get these glands that grow together at the bases, but if you're a long ways away and you can't really tell, obviously the billies are gonna have a bigger body, but they also, you know, they act macho, they're covered in dirt, you know, they're always like rolling in the dirt and the mud. There's, we just call them dirty billies. And uh, that's a sure-fired sign that you got a male, and all four of those goats I'm looking at up there are dirty, filthy, rolling in the mud looking billies. I looked at that top one and I thought, you know, he's kind of separated himself from them. Yeah, he's probably the older goat. Yeah, that's a good one. I don't think of going on a goat hunt and using a four wheeler, but I guess to get up the road a ways. The ATV didn't turn out to be as useful as we had hoped. After all that work, we only used it to cover less than a mile of old logging road. We parked it at the bottom of the long ridge, just west of where the goats were bedded. We go up there as light as we can. We come down as heavy as possible. Yeah. We emptied our packs of any unnecessary gear and weight. stretched out our legs and started the climb. Somewhere over 2,000 feet above us was the prize. All we had to do was climb. This segment of the adventure series is sponsored by Bergara Rifles. Our barrels make the difference. This segment of the Adventure Series is brought to you by Cordova Coolers, a cooler innovation. All this time I thought we were gonna use the four-wheeler to go up these remote logging roads, but right off the bat we spotted these four mountain goats right up off the salt water, and they were just basically straight up. So all we ended up using the four-wheeler for was to go about a quarter of a mile up the road to the bottom of the hill, and from there, it was just straight up. And it was go time. Uh, they were all bedded down, they were in an approachable place, and it was, it was time to get up there and get after it. Uh, going up the mountain is always an adventure. It's. Uh, easily my favorite part. You know, we were coming off of a, a two, two and a half week stone sheep punt, so I felt physically like I was good to go. You know, I just like watching Big Steve grind it out, <laughs> you know? Um, it's fun, I mean, you, you're carrying a lot of camera gear, but uh, that's the exciting part, you know, the, the, the beginning of the adventure is always uh, one of my favorite parts of, of coming out here and doing this, and it was my first time filming a mountain goat, so, uh, you know, that, that always adds a, a special flair to something when, when it's your first time going out there and, and trying to capture it and uh, tell the story. Anyone with a little bit of physical capability and a lot of heart and determination can do this hunt.
don't get self-defeated before you even try because it's never as bad as it looks. These mountains, they'll spook you for the first 10 steps. And next thing you know, an hour later, you're three quarters of the way up the mountain with the prize in sight. If you have a little bit of physical ability and a lot of determination and heart, you can get a mountain goat. And I would urge you to try to get here someday and take in this wonderful experience. Back there, this fish are probably spawning up in that. Up in that, there's the creek that runs out. Oh, I sit here and I look at this and I think, well, why not? We'll go up here and whack a goat. If we're lucky enough to get a goat, we'll come back down, sit up on top here. And we can be up here in 30 minutes. Sit down and start glassing. Although there are better places to glass this from where more than Well, we're probably somewhere between a third and halfway of the way up the mountain here. I'd say we're about a thousand feet up into a, say, 2,200 foot climb. And it's steep, straight up and down, vertical and nasty. But that's goat hunting. So you gotta have a good attitude. Goat ain't coming down to us. The climb on those was uh, probably tougher than average for here. Uh, more vertical feet, more brush. Um, of course, we were right on the edge of weather. And that that's not, doesn't always help you. Anytime here in the, the first part in the trees, then the timber was pretty good cruising. And then we kind of got through the first bit of brush and we thought we were about halfway. And I think there were two or three times that we looked up the hill and we were like, oh man. We're getting there. It's a great thing about goat hunting this time of year. You got long days. Take your time, even if you're not a mountaineer. But if I look like I'm a mountaineer in shape, you're nuts. But you go a little ways and you rest. You go a little ways, you rest. You got all day. Anybody can do this hunt if they got some heart. A little determination goes a long ways out here. It didn't work on me. <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> yes, it did. <laughs> <laughs> and Steve, when it, you know, I'd start to feel a little sluggish and I'd look at him and then he'd be just pumping right up the mountain and right there with me or in front of me. So it was fun. I had a, it was a good week and I was really pleased at the way things came out. And then, but what peak are they under? They're clear up there, right? Yeah, whatever we do, we just gotta get to them. We always run out of vegetation. The problem is when you get in that, it's pretty stuck. Thick. I think 500 feet up and about 500 yards over. Good night. Well, they're about 1,000, 1,200 yards away. I can't see them. I don't know where they're at. I can see the rock pinnacle that's right above. Everything's slippery. We gotta go up about four or 500 more feet vertically. Then we're gonna come back across. Peek over on them. Earn a goat. You always earn a goat.
This segment of the Adventure Series is sponsored by Camo Restore. Make your camo outerwear last a little bit longer. Get the new Steve's Outdoor Adventures app for your smartphone or tablet. New features include an expanded selection of videos and the all new bragging board, where through the app, you can upload your photos and share your hunting stories. And winners are selected weekly and receive sponsor gear as prizes. We got to the top of the mountain. We realized that we were about a half hour late and this fog started blowing in and the weather was starting to turn. And we went from being able to see the goats to not be able to see the goats. Oh, the goats are right there. They're bedded on the hill about, I don't know, I'm gonna guess 200 yards away. It was a race against the storm. And it still is. It's blowing in on us bad, just as forecast. When that fog rolled in, I thought it was, uh, I thought it was over. I thought this was gonna be uh, our fifth hunt in a row of, of just having the weather knock us down. We got them. I'm gonna move up about eight or nine feet, and I'm gonna set up my pack, and I'm gonna get ready to start looking up. I was 191 yards away from these goats and I couldn't see them for five and 10 minutes at a stretch. And that was really frustrating. So what I decided to do was use the fog to move up closer and closer. And then I was at 140 yards. And once I got to 140 yards, the fog got thicker yet. This segment of the Adventure Series is sponsored by Super Hides by Marathon Seat Covers. This segment of the Adventure Series is sponsored by Caldwell Shooting Supplies. Innovation defined, accuracy anywhere. When that weather rolled in between me and four big billy goats on the side of the mountain, I said no more. I couldn't take it. I had to get up and I had to make something happen. And that's when I turned to Paul and I turned to Ian. And I said, get the camera, pick it up. We're going through the fog and we're gonna go point blank.
we've traveled how far and, and, and you know, come so far and hiked so hard uh, to A, have the fog kick us, kick us, knock us down, but then to start leaving camera equipment scattered across the mountain <laughs> as we hopscotched our way in, uh, I thought he was nuts. And uh, if there's one thing I've learned, it's trust Steve, trust him. We kept inching closer and closer to these things because the fog would come in and then you'd have it. And that last 75 yards was like, man, we're, we're gonna walk right into these things. Sometimes you just have to get up and go make it happen. This segment of the Adventure Series is sponsored by Tribe One Outdoors and their innovative products. If you'd like to book your own guided big game hunting adventure, give my office a call. I will personally take your calls, answer your questions, and help you book the hunting or fishing trip of a lifetime. We were moving through the fog and all of a sudden it started to thin out and I could see all of the goats. And the first thing we do is we all went to a knee and I had the decoy in front of me. I brought my muzzle loader up and let the decoy down. I hit the range. I don't know why I ranged this goat because he's so close, but it's 32 yards. He looked big, he looked heavy, he looked mature. And to me, he looked to be the best of the four of them. I pulled back the hammer and let her fly. That was it, you know, it was just amazing. I mean, it was like it hit, got hit by a freight train. That 400 grain bullet just, that doesn't always happen. Yes. Alaska Mountain Goat in the pea soup fall. I can't even describe to you how far up on this mountain we are right now because it is so foggy. Paul's racing down there to try and catch that poor goat. He's tumbling. It's so steep here. I want to go down and put my hands on my goat so bad. But we gotta go over here and get some gear. I like it floating on cloud nine. If this fog bank is cloud nine, I'm on it. Floating around. My dry spell has ended. <laughs> He's down down that point. It just worked out perfectly. I mean, it, I've never really had anything like that go down that, that smooth. It worked really well. And the reason it worked out well, because we went for it, you know? It's definitely a lesson there. The goat, down the boat. Yeah, he's just, I'd say nine and a quarter. Real heavy. Yeah. His mass Beautiful. is incredible down low. Six, seven, eight. Yeah. He's an eight-year-old. That's what you're looking for when you're looking for a billy. A lot of people say, oh, you don't know the difference between billies and anyone. You can see this right there at a distance. It makes it look like the bases are super heavy. Nannies don't have those. They're beautiful animals. 
I mean, I love to hunt mountain animals. I love the sheep. I love the goats. I love the challenges that come with them. And they're just some of the most beautiful animals on earth. I mean, you just, you gotta take a second after you, you harvest one and just pay them a little homage, you know, pay them a little respect for what they are. It doesn't look that pretty right now because he's wet and he just came cartwheeling 500 feet off of a mountain. But the truth of the matter is, in fact, you can see right here, look at this, look at that. But I mean, you look here and, and you, you see this wet, you know, stringy stuff on the surface. But right down in there, you got, look at all that hair. No wonder they're so warm in the winter. Just beautiful hair, thank you. Bet, that was a hunt I'll never forget. That was a hunt I'll never forget. It was <laughs> great. What that a doesn't uh, always go down like that. 32 yards. Holy cow. You know what really sucks that you're going to have to put the whole thing in your pack and take him down, but um, I fully intend to eat candy bars and watch you the whole time. That's what I've heard. <laughs> Can I see the boat? See you home. Once we had the mountain goat down and we started taking pictures and we we're shooting some more video, the rain started to come down in buckets. The wind started to blow. It was probably howling 50 plus knots on top of the mountain, driving rain and moisture. And we had all of this expensive video gear up there. What I was worried about was the side hilling and the alders. What I should have been worried about was the first part of it. And the thing, the stuff that we came up that was so steep. We had to make a decision to put it away. Not only was the weather gonna ruin our camera equipment, but we also had a sheer vertical slide off the mountain, and we all needed to have two hands free. So we put away the camera equipment, and we spent the next three hours descending 2,200 vertical feet back down to sea level through everything that we had experienced going up. And there was a couple times we just had to take our packs off and just let them go. 200 yards down the hill so we were safe because there was no way you were gonna slide down that thing with a 100 pound pack strapped on your back. So you get stuck in that high country, soaking wet overnight, you'll, exposure will get you. Somebody turns a leg, you got a real problem. I feel like I have had my ass whooped by Andre the Giant. It's another time! I'm gonna use my uh, DeLorean inReach. I'm gonna send a message home. Tell them we're all safe and sound. It's kind of cool to watch our tracks where all we went. We gotta get things packed up. Just sent the message that we're uh, all tagged out, we're safe and sound, and get ready to head home. Well, that was an exciting hunt. You know, it's a package that I've recommended to all of my clients for many years, and life out on the boat, it's an experience that, well, there's just nothing quite like it. It really adds a unique element to the hunt. There were four of us that week out on the boat hunting, and three of us were able to tag big mature mountain goats. Unfortunately, my good friend, Brian Carey from Burris Optics, wasn't able to tag a goat. But don't worry, he's persistent and resilient. And next week, he's back up on the mountain pursuing his lifelong dream of taking a mountain goat. But that's another story for another day and next week's exciting episode of the Adventure Series.